Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 515. It's Thursday, May 30th, 2013, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Internet talk radio for your imagination. Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today we hear from Shelly Schuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer. Plus we bring you the segment into an interview where I speak with Gene Davenport of the band Swim Club. Mike's Daily Podcast. And I have had a bunch of issues with bees attacking my house. Bub. Mike's Daily Podcast. What they have been doing has been getting into my chimney and creating a hive. And I was really worried. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to come in and eat me alive. And you know what? Bees don't actually do that. They just sting you when they are being threatened. And it's amazing how much beekeepers want to charge you to try and get them. I understand they have potential to get stung, but geez, a thousand dollars. Mike's Daily Podcast. But that beekeeper said she had like a 90% survival rate of the bees. Those bees make me want to holler. Mike's. I'm getting sick of them. Daily but I podcast realize now yeah. through the kindness of Keystone bug killers that they uh, they actually sent a guy over just to check out the situation and he looked he's the only one and this is after talking to the Alameda County pest control people they the county has their own you know they they go around and make sure that pests are contained so that the communities aren't affected. They do it for free. And they came by, the Alameda County people, and they're like, ah, no, we're not going to do anything. And let's see, there was another uh, company that exterminates bugs, and they're like, no, we're not going to do it. But Keystone, they're awesome. They actually climbed up on the roof, they looked into the chimney, and the guy took a picture with his smartphone and he showed it to me and he said, look, the bees aren't actually in the chimney itself. They're just at the top. There's like a little crack at the very top of the spout of the chimney and they're in there. And thanks to him, I know the answer. So peace of mind. Now, have the bees been getting into the house? Yes, a little bit. They've been flying. I've been catching a couple in the, in the living room. I release them. I don't kill them. I release them back into the wild. So I'm being really uh, environmental and green. And, and, you know, nature conscious, one with nature. But that guy's going to come back tomorrow and he's going to kill them all. Oh, look, I just walked in. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's so hard to get strap supervisor. You shouldn't kill a bunch of bees. Why not? They're bugging me. Yes, but that's, what they're, that's their name. They're bugs. They're supposed to bug you. Oh, you're right. I've changed my mind. Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, it's very interesting that a giant rock is going to sail past the Earth tomorrow. Ah, yeah. Astronomers around the world are gearing up for their first close-up views of a giant space rock. It's going to hurtle by, according to the newswatch.nationalgeographic.com website. It's called 1998 QE2. That's an interesting name. So like after the ship, they used to take people across the Atlantic. That's crazy. QE2 is a true mountain in motion stretching 1.7 miles across, nine times the length of the 12-deck Queen Elizabeth II cruise ship. Nine times. Wow. So this is a big baby. Luckily for us, there is no chance of a collision. It will pass by around uh, 4.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at a safe distance of about 3.6 million miles, 15 times the distance separating the Earth from the Moon. This is the closest approach the asteroid will make to our planet for at least the next two centuries. Mike, I used to work on the QE2, and I used to have to swab the deck because I'm Floyd the Floorman, and I clean floors. Wow, that must have been a lot of work. Yeah, nice people, though. Mike, do you know who's not a nice guy? Who? Liberace. Oh, yes, there's that um, HBO movie about him with the Michael Douglas and Matt Damon. Yes, he was very mean to the people that worked for him. Well, that is not the people that work for me here. I'm extremely nice to them, right, Floyd? I don't know, Mike. What do you want me to say? I don't want you to hurt me because I'm Floyd the Floorman. 
Floyd, you can say anything you want, as well as you, Shelly. All I want to say, Mike Matthews, is you better be nice to those bees. I'll be nice to the bees. And to you, my little worker bees. We don't care about you. Yeah, we're on strike. Suddenly I feel so alone. So if you think that's fascinating about the 1998 QE2 whizzing by the earth whizzing, hope it's not whizzing in space. That could be a bit messy. Or uh, flying by the earth tomorrow. Or if you think that's fascinating or not fascinating or whatever, you can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. You can also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show. That is mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. And check out the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. We got links to where to find us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, right? We're on there. We're on Spreaker, SoundCloud, Twitter, Yelp. I think I mentioned everybody twice. And there's also a link to where to go and find the Amazon deal of the day. And if you buy something there through the portal that we have on the website that you can access through your desktop or laptop, why we get a little something for that if you buy something through there. It's awesome. We also have the blog and the podcast all at mikesdailypodcast.com. Into an interview. This is Gene. Gene, it's Mike Matthews from Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. I love your music. You know what? Thank you so much. Like, we're at that stage where it's like any any person who, like, finds us and listens to the tunes and gets back to us, it's a, it's a huge rush. <laughs> we're, you know, we're, we're definitely there. Well, I, I love all the songs. Uh, I want to play El Lamento. Uh, which is a great name for a song. And I'll say, that's one. That's one that I actually wrote. That's, uh, oh well, <laughs> that's the only one. Let's talk about it then, because what was it like writing that, and how did? Now that's off of the Funhouse for Friends album. It's yeah, it's actually Funhouse for Fiends. Fiends. I'm sorry. I don't yeah, know why I threw it. Uh, no, every everyone does that. Like uh, <laughs> we want it to be a little edgy. We want it to get edgy. A little, a little edgy with the name, but everyone always thinks it's Funhouse or Friends. I think because the music's kind of happy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I like fiends. That's good. There are a lot of fiends in this world. Yeah, sure. Funhouse for fiends. Um, so I think, yeah, we wanted to. You know, when you have like kind of like you know happy tunes, you want to throw something a little uh, you know downward in there. That's, so that's why we called it that. Oh, okay. EP. Okay, because it's uh, happy music, and it's sort of the the clown with the bomb. The happy clown, exactly. but he's got a bomb hidden in his nose. Yeah, the, the sad clown. The sad clown. <laughs> right. And Elemento, El... Oh, wow, Elemento. When you say it fast, it's like saying the Spanish word of the word element. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Is that what it is that what it's supposed to be or did I just come upon that in a slow way? I don't I think it's supposed to um I just I came up with I just wanted to come up with a uh you know, I just didn't want to call the the song like uh you know, I don't want to you know, you when you're naming a song, you just usually you go with the chorus or whatever, or whatever the, you know, the right. the most repetitive part of the song is, you'll that's what you'll name it. And I just wanted to come up with something different, so I came up with uh, The Lament. And uh, I translated it on my own. I don't even know if it works. I don't know <laughs> if that's really correct. But basically, in Spanish, The Lament. Right. I think you're right. I don't know. I took Spanish in high school, but I, I failed it. Did you do uh, t- <laughs> three years? I, yeah, for like two or three years. Yeah. I can't, I can't speak. Yeah, I've forgotten most of it. My third year of Spanish, I was going to a school in Oxnard, California, and everyone yeah. that took the, the class was Mexican, and they already spoke Spanish. <laughs> they learned it growing up. And, it's like an easy A for, for them. And, and I'm a white guy in the class trying to, I can't even roll my R's. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's talking. Are they talking about me? Uh, I think I heard the word gordo. Yeah. Someone's saying I'm fat. 
I'm going. I'm going back. I'm going to Rosetta Stone. I'm gonna. I, <laughs> I really actually want to learn how to how to speak Spanish. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the world speaks it, and a lot of beautiful ladies speak <laughs> it. Oh, that's for sure. Um, and you can tell everyone that you wrote that song, Elemento. Exactly. Now the music. Okay, so I have a question about it. Technically, you've got that cool little keyboard thing at the beginning. Yeah. Is that anyone's keyboard? It kind of has an interesting way how it starts off the song. That's a great question. I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, I took, you know, the keyboards you like you go into Target or wherever. Right. I a Casio keyboard. That's where I get mine. Dollars. Target. That's 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 all we use. <laughs> and uh, I just ran it through a couple pedals and into Pro Tools and just did some, you know, some some weird things. Oh. Like a, uh, yeah, nothing nothing major. Just, you know, we, we have basically no budget. Uh-huh. So we we do what we can with what we have. And uh, it, came, it came out pretty well. I think it sounds kind of like, you know, like maybe Daft Punk, Daft punk or something, you know? <laughs> It sounds it sounds more expensive, I think, than than it is. Only you're not French. Not French, and you're not robots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the lead singer of the band Swim Club is Greg Ag- Greg Adams. Greg Adams, yeah. Okay, and 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 so when you guys play, is it sort of just? Do you come up with a, a set list beforehand, or is it kind of by feeling out the crowd, or how do you come up with when you're playing live? We we prepare as much as we can. Cause oh. we're we're uh, you know we're frightened. <laughs> we're frightened by you know being judged and like there's a, a real crowd there. Yeah. So we we try to be as prepared as possible, but um, we just you, you leave a, a little space to, you know, if you're if you're feeling it, you can maybe kind of jam a little bit or kind of do something goofy and it, d- it depends on really like how we're feeling and what, what what's going on out there you know right so so okay it's a it's mostly planned you're just for the safe aspect of it but then you have ability to veer off and yeah go. like the, the set list there'll be like a set list of you know everyone has their set list it's all written down and in the middle, like, you know, we'll just write jam. <laughs> and then, you know, if no one, if, if we're not feeling it, then we just skip over that part and just you know, just try to get done as soon as possible. Right. Okay. Uh, find an escape route. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're playing like some tiny clubs. So it's, you know, we can play t- for anyone, like for a crowd of like literally like two to three people. Up to a hundred, and that's 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 where we're at now. Okay. Well, what I would no, what? go ahead. No, go ahead. Um. So, so like t- two to three hundred people, and and what is this um, CMJ that you're working oh, with? This, oh, CMJ is uh, that's um, the College Music Journal, and on the East Coast, it's like it's uh, you know it's a big thing they have every year, every fall. Oh, okay. In the, in New York, and uh, they just uh, they have you know, they get try to get a room. It's 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 a huge event. There's um, like hundreds of bands play over like a, a week long period. Ah. And uh, and you know it's like uh, all you know it's a big industry thing. Basically, pe- people trying to trying to get discovered or trying to promote promote themselves. And uh, we've been lucky enough to get in like uh, for. You know, like three times. It's hard to get in if you, if you're not a, if you're not signed to a label. It's it's kind of like right. uh, you're on your own. It's hard to get in. But uh, we've been lucky enough to someone who works at CMJ. They kind of they, they dug our music and they they booked us for a few shows and it's a lot of fun. We usually play at like two in the morning. <laughs> That's when the good but, stuff is happening. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Things get a little crazy. Why sleep? There's no need for sleeping when you can just watch it music all night. Yeah. Wait exactly. Wait till the subway's on again and you know, you don't have to check into a hotel. You're you're already awake. It's perfect. Um, exactly. But wow, I'd love to come out and see that. Is that like um what 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 time of year is that usually? 
It's usually in October. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's it's kind of akin to you know out west like.